He says, here in Honduras, we're facing a lot of variables in regard to the amount of hours of sleep that are necessary to be productive. Uh, violence, delinquency, robbery, lack of a good infrastructure in transportation, unemployment, and the like. Mothers and fathers can barely earn enough just to eat. They are required to work for 10 or 12 hours daily. What can we expect from this type of society, which he puts in quotes? And I think this addresses the question someone brought up of disparities, that it is really um, people who are in uh, uh, stressful environments and uh, have uh, uh, lower incomes who are suffering um, these, uh, these situations. Can you talk to, to this issue? Yeah. Yes. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that is <laughs> undoubtedly one of the major contributing factors to why, as you pointed out, uh, Susan, that uh, the people from disadvantaged backgrounds and uh, and uh, lower socioeconomic groups, uh, that's one of the major contributors to whether they uh, can sleep well. And, and in fact, uh, many years ago it was shown that, that uh, some children who were suffering from what is called psychosocial dwarfism, where they're in a very disrupted social environment and they're not actually growing, uh, that when they're taken out of that environment and put into a more protected environment where they can sleep, uh, that they are able to uh, continue to grow. And growth hormone is one of the hormones that is released during deep, slow wave sleep. So if you're in an environment that is uh, so filled with anxiety and danger and disruption that you can't sleep well, that may I even interfere with your growth. Yeah, I want to add that here we're talking about uh, sleep deprivation, obesity, diabetes, and the so-called uh, Western diseases, but now there is increasing evidence that sleep deprivation also contributes to infectious diseases, which are very common in developing countries. Uh, there is a recent study, uh, actually from the Nurses' Health Study, showing that uh, people who are sleep deprived uh, are more likely to uh, develop pneumonia. Uh, and as Susan mentioned earlier, uh, sleep is very important for our immune function, for host defense, and so it's possible that those who are sleep deprived, they have weakened immune system, a weakened host uh, defense, and uh, they are, uh, that's the reason they are more susceptible to infections. So I think sleep is not only important for chronic diseases, but also for infectious diseases. Yeah. And I just, I did want to add, I mean, uh, my heart goes out to people living in these situations, and there's obviously no easy fix. But there are people I, I know in this country and globally very committed to trying to work at proving the sleeping conditions of some of the most disadvantaged populations. There is an organization um, that's a nonprofit that works at trying to find bedding and um, mosquito nets and um, work with families to try to at least find safe places for children and their families to sleep in at night. There's a group Sleep Dreams in Detroit that does that, and then there's this global group. So there's some, sometimes there are things that you could do on a local level to at least make the family and the child feel more secure and sleeping, although not obviously eliminate everything.